Okay, so we'll start in Eclipse. Um, you should have the Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse version installed, and you should have the version that has the Oracle Math support in it, and in that case you would have the Oracle Math perspective, and you should be able to go and choose File, New, and create a new Math application. Give your application a name, so we'll call it the Demo VTS app. Okay. You can choose a math version, we're going to use the latest version that is available today. And next, next, here you can specify and add more targets. Um, basically I have both iOS and Android as targets for my application. And let's click Finish. So Eclipse at this point of time is going and creating the project structure for our math application and you'll see three projects. Most of our work is going to be done in the demo VTS view project. This is actually where we're defining the user interface and the access to the data and this is also something that you can then package as a feature. Um, in general when you're working you will also probably would want to look into the application project where you have the application level definitions, things like the lifecycle initialization and all sorts of application level preferences. All right, but for our course we're going to expand the demo VTS view project okay and under the math node we'll see the math feature editor and let's double click it to open the editor itself. Here we can define the features that will comprise our application. So we're going to define two features. Okay, so we'll first define a feature and we'll call this one the AMP feature, or actually let's call it HR feature, okay, because this is a complete HR system that we're building. Okay, and we're also going to define another feature, um, and this one we'll call it the HELP feature. So this would be our help system. Okay. So for each one of those features you can define what type of feature this is. So first of all here you can define description, vendor, other aspects including the image that will be shown on the navigation bar icon or the springboard. Okay, we're going to use the default images that are in there but for a nicer application you would probably want to include a more um, appropriate image here. So we're going to now pick the help feature and click, right click and say new. And we're going to define that this feature is actually based on a local HTML file. If you know Oracle Math, you can define three types of uh, content in the application. Local HTML is basically any HTML5 JavaScript code that you want to run on the device. Remote URL brings you remote HTML content from some server and AMX and task flows are using our framework. So for now we're going to define a local HTML just to show you how this would work. Okay, and we're going to then over here define a new HTML file. Let's call it the help HTML page. And this is for example one way for you to implement uh, help for your application. Just write some HTML code. Okay, so go into the HTML editor in Eclipse and just write some code. So for example, welcome to the help system, like that. And again, in here you can use any JavaScript HTML5 set of components and um, you should be fine here. Okay, let's click save, save this page and we're done with this page. Okay. We can also save the math feature um, file. And now let's modify our HR feature. So our HR feature, right click on it, choose new, and we're going to define the disk a feature is actually composed of a task flow. Okay. So a task flow is actually a flow of multiple pages that can change in the same web view. So over here we're going to define our new task flow. And let's call this one the HR flow. Okay. And click finish. And this creates our flow, or basically the controller layer for our feature. And it will take us into the visual editor for our task flow. Okay. 
Again, at this stage we can save everything and we're ready to work on our HR flow. What we're going to do here is describe the flow of our application by taking components and dropping them on the page. So we took the view component, dropped it, and this will be our first page, we'd call it the list page. Okay. And we're going to create another view here, we're going to call this one the add page, another view here, call this one the chart page, and another view here, call this one the camera page. So now that we have the four pages, let's create flows between them. So pick up the control flow case and drag from the list, drop on each one of those. So for the camera, we'll call it pick. Okay. Then we'll do a flow from the list to the head and we'll call this flow the head. And then from the list to the chart and we'll call this one chart. Okay. Then switch over to the selection tool and what you can see is that when you select each one of those flows, if you actually look at the property inspector for them, okay, you can actually see the details about their uh, name, where they're coming from, where they're going, and what outcome actually creates it. And if you messed up anything in terms of dragging and dropping and not renaming it at the right time, you can change properties directly here. One interesting aspect about those properties, there's this transition type that allows you to define a visual effect that is going to happen when you're transitioning between the pages. So feel free to pick different transitions for each one of those, just to see how they will behave at runtime when you do the transition in your application. Okay. Just like that. So this is our page flow. Again, save everything at this stage. And by the way, the the definition here, if you look at the source, is all done in XML. Okay, you can go directly into the XML and change things if you want to. You can also see the same file displayed in an overview editor and again see all the activities and the control flows from the list defined here and modify them from the same interface. So it really depends on how you prefer to work with the same file. We give you various options. All right, now that we have the flows defined, let's go and create the first page. So double click on the list page. This brings you into the wizard that helps you define your page structure. You can define the components that would show up on your page. In our page, we don't actually need a footer. We're just going to have a header with two buttons and we'll call this page the list. So just click finish. And here you'll be taken into the AMX page editor. And this is basically just your uh, UI editor. And what you can see is that your UI is consistent of, is consist of various components and properties for each component. So for example, this is the header that will be displayed in your page. And you can go in here and you can actually modify the value. So either directly in the code or in the um, property inspector over here, you can say, we want this to be HR system. That would be the title for this page. Okay. Um, let's go to each one of the buttons at this stage. Okay. And for each button, we can define a text. So the first button, let's make it the chart button. Okay. So it will take us to the chart. Okay. And the second button, we can go over here and um, define this to be the pick. So this will basically take a picture um, button. So this is the text. And again, usually in a mobile application, instead of having text, you would want to use the icon property and specify a specific image that will be displayed on each one of those buttons. Makes the application looks better. But in our case, we're just using short text on each one of those. The other thing that you set for buttons are button actions. So what's going to happen when you press each one of the buttons and you can choose from the list, okay? Or you can just um, also do it directly in the code. So you can actually go in here and say that the pick button, the action that it's going to do is the pick action. So this will do the navigation. By the way, if you're using Eclipse, you can use the keyboard shortcut to get code insight and pick up values with 
this approach okay and um, so this button is going to do the chart navigation all right so save this page now okay and we want to also save by the way the flow here like that all right so now that we have the basic uh, layout for our page let's add one more layout component to our page here in the component palette you should be able to see your math amx components and you can scroll for them and you can search for specific components and um, you can actually type and we'll filter the list for you okay so we're looking for the panel splitter component okay so either scroll to it or type and just drag and drop it into your UI just after the facet and before the panel page and click finish okay so you should now have a panel splitter as part of your page by the way over here in the outline editor you can see the structure of the page and see how the page is constructed and the hierarchy of components so at this stage your page should have various sections you should have a header a primary and a secondary and a panel splitter so this is the layout of our page All right let's click save and what we're going to do next is actually add some data sources to our page okay so for this lab we're going to use a simple Java class as the first data source so go ahead click on the demo view project okay right click and say new Java class and we're going to create a class called amp so uppercase E amp and just click finish All right and this class is going to represent the structure of an employee and, and you can code everything here but we're actually going to save you from coding if you go to the lab instructions okay you will have see the source that we want you to paste into the AMP class so just copy this over yeah, all the way to the AMP class and copy this then go back into Eclipse keep the package line but remove the rest of the class and just do a paste okay so just to show you what this class is it's a very simple POJO it defines several properties like name email salary and hire date then we have getters and setters for each one of those and we also have a constructor for the employee object that receives the various uh, fields and the one thing that is unique to math here is that we're also using property change events uh, and listeners to basically indicate when something changed in one of our properties okay so for example when someone sets the email we're firing an event this allows the UI layer to know that uh, something has changed and it needs to refresh so this is the AMP class you can click save and now the next step is to create another Java class so right click new class and this one will be the AMPs so add an S at the end this is kind of our service class so this would be the data access object class in this case and again we're going to do the same thing delete the first two lines skip the package go back to the lab instructions and copy what is inside the AMPs class so just copy this code and we'll review it in a second copy it and paste it into Eclipse right so what we do in the AMPs class is we actually define an array of employees okay and then in the uh, method that actually creates the class we're uh, initializing this list of employees with a bunch of new employees that we're creating okay so this is right now static data in real situation this data would probably come either from the local SQLite database so you'll have some JDBC code here accessing the local SQLite it might come from a remote REST service that you parse and you populate disk um, array those type of sources of data we also have here an add employee method that receives a name and a salary and then creates the employee adds a specific email and assigns a specific date as the start date okay so those are just examples of the type of um, classes that you might create to work with your data now let me show you how easy it is to expose this class to be used inside your user interface layer so all you do is you stand on the AMPs class right click on it choose the model component menu option and choose to create a data control 
go with all the defaults that you have here and click finish and what this does is uses the Oracle math concept of data controls to describe the structure of the class to the framework so if you actually now expose what you have in the data control math you'll see the EMPS collection this is an indication of a collection various attributes and you would also see the methods that we have in our Java class okay all the public methods right nice so we're done with this data control and with the employee class let's go back to the list AMX page so this is the UI part okay and now that we have a source of data let's add it to this page to do this in the property in the palette here of the components switch to the data view okay and in data view you can access manage bins page variables and also data controls under data controls you will see the amps that you just created data control and you will see the amps collection so we can now drag and drop it and we'll drop it right here inside the navigator facet of our panel splitter when you drop it you have various um, components that you can bind to okay we're going to use the list view on this section of the page a list view allows you to show a uh, collections of data we're going to choose the second type and the second type here again those are just different layouts for your list view click next define what you want to show in the list so I'm going to show the name is the first field and then let's show the salary okay uh, you can keep all of those preferences the same except for the divider mode let's do a divider by first letter so we'll have a division of our list by the first letter and you can see here that you can also uh, enable selection of rows and things like that so let's click finish and what math does now is create the list view component for us the list view is actually uh, containing multiple sub components there's a whole table layout in here there are multiple output text components showing us the data about the row uh, that we're currently looking at right so this is how we created the list view next we're going to put something in here in the panel items section okay so at this stage save everything and let's take the same employee collection and drop it this time directly into the structure pane into the panel item here and we'll drop it as a chart okay and then click finish we can do a read only we can do a read write you can also rearrange the order of columns remove columns just play with it as you like when you click finish your panel form layout should be inside your panel item by the way if something got messed up in your UI if something got positioned in the wrong position you can just drag and drop components inside this um, structure pane to move a whole set of components to a new location okay so this is very useful it's an interactive um, component right so if you want to reorder for example fields you can take one field and just move it to another place okay just like that and it will change the code appropriately all right so now that we have our page done let's create the next page so first do a save okay you want to save this page make sure that everything is in place let's go to our um, HR flow okay and let's handle the chart page next okay so double click on chart okay create a page in this case we only need one button so you can remove one of the buttons here and click finish and in this page we will do a graph of salaries so instead of header you can put salaries up here the button that we have here would need to navigate to the previous page so just give it a text of back okay in the button action you should be able to choose the back navigation which is a built-in navigation we have okay just going back to the previous page and then we want to show a graph so to do that what we're going to do is look at data under data control you'll see amps okay take the same collection that you took before drag it again after the facet and this time drop it as a chart let's do a bar chart of salaries okay so click next choose which component to put at the top so this would be salary this is the bars and then we're going to display it against the name of the employee so again double click to move it to the right click OK and we have the chart component 
So this is how easy it is to create charts in your user interface. Alright, let's save this page. Okay. And let's go back to our flow. HR flow. Okay. And we can save this one again. And next we're going to actually um, modify the add page. Okay. So on the add page, again click finish. Actually, you can remove one of the buttons if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And this would allow us to add a new employee. So, call it Add Employee. That would be the title. Button. Okay. Again, do a back button. Okay. And the back connection can be back. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is take a method from our data control. So if you remember, the EMPS class had a method called add employee. This method, by the way, has two parameters, name and salary, it returns a value. And what we can do is just take this method, drag and drop it again after the facet over here, and drop it as a parameter form. This will create a form with the two parameters for people to fill out, and it will also create a button that would actually execute the adding of an employee. This button has an action listener, but it can also have just an action. So let's use the action property here and set it to back. So this button is not only going to add an employee, it's also going to navigate back in our flow to the previous page, which is the list page. Okay, save everything. And this is how we added this page. All right, we're going to do one more thing here. And again, go to the HR flow. Okay, save it. And what we want to do now is create the camera page. In the camera page, we can take pictures of employees. Right, so let's double click the camera and we'll create the page. Okay, switch the title to be uh, take picture, for example. Okay. Um, assign one of the buttons to do a back navigation, so you should already be familiar with how to do that. Set the text and set the action for this button to do back navigation. Alright, so what we're going to do now is show you that in the data section, data controls, beyond the classes that you expose, you already have things like device features, and if you expand this, you'll see multiple device features that you can use, including the ability to create contacts, uh, send SMS, find your location, and other interactions with the device itself. We're going to use the getPicture method. Okay, so the getPicture has a bunch of uh, parameters that it receives, okay, and it also returns a string, and we're just going to click on the button, on the method, and drag and drop it into our page. Okay, so again, from here, drag it to your page, and this time drop it just as a link. Okay, we're going to hard code the values for now. So the quality, it's on the range of um, 0 to 100, we're going to do 90. Destination type, we're going to put it into a file. Um, source type, and this is, um, we're going to use the library in this case because we're going to run on an emulator and the emulator usually can't invoke an actual camera. Okay, so just use zero or the library. We're going to allow edit. We're going to use an encoding type of PNG. And then in terms of the size of the image, let's use a 300 by 200 as the size of the image. Um, and again, each one of those can be based on an expression language, it can be something that you provide in your page, and um, we're just hard coding values for now. Um, once you do this, the uh, Eclipse environment is going to tell you, hey, you're trying to access the camera, so you better allow this in your application. So click the Open Application Editor, okay, and you want to enable camera access. Okay, make sure also that your network access is enabled because you want that. Over here, basically, you have control over which features your application is going to ask permission to access um, in the environment. All right, let's save this page, go back to the camera page, make sure that everything is all right in terms of your structure, save everything. So as you can see, I, I messed a little bit my UI, so again, you can take, for example, the uh, button and just make sure that it's right here after this facet. Um, 
over here so it should be like a top level item underneath your page okay and we also want to show the results of the picture so take the result of the method string and drop it after the button okay and just drop it as an image so under text you can choose image and that would actually show us the image that we selected okay so this is the camera page let's save everything and this is our application so far okay we're going to do one more thing in our application and again this is not mandatory you can skip that stage if you want to but I want to show you how to access web services in your application so let's go back to the HR flow save it and we're going to add one more page to our flow okay so let's add a page here okay. and we'll call this the WS for web service and we're going to define navigation from the list to the web service page call it the WS navigation All right. and you can now double click on the WS page to create this page. I'm sorry, I had the control flow enabled, so let's remove this one and double click the web service. Okay, so again we'll change the header, call it web service, change a button and to do a back navigation. And what we want to do now is connect to a remote web service. Again, if you go to your lab instruction, you will have the URL for this web service. You can click on it to see the actual WSDL. Make sure that you have connection enabled. Okay, I'm using Safari, so the XML is actually getting translated. And then just copy this address. Okay, directly from the instruction, you can copy it. And then go back into your environment okay into Eclipse and we're going to again in the demo view right click and say that we want to create a new data control and the data control it's not a Java bin data control this time it's a web service data control okay he's looking to get a URL for a WSDL so this is a remote WSDL can just paste it here okay this is the address that you copied before that from the lab instructions and you can click OK okay once you're connected to your web service wisdom okay if you click next you will be able to see more details about the web service so give a name to your data control we'll call it weather because this is a weather web service and you can see the various method we're going to use the get city forecast and get city weather by zip methods okay so just click them next and then click finish so what is happening here is that Oracle Math knows how to parse the WSDL, understand the method, understand parameters, understand the structure of returned values and it creates a data control that we can use in our user interface so again let's save everything and then go to our web service page if we now look into our data control section we'll see the weather web service data control and you'll see the methods so you can actually see parameters okay the zip code and the returned value, so the forecast. Okay. Um, let's do this. Take the method, okay, and drop it into your page here as a parameter form. Okay, the parameter is a zip. It's going to be represented as an input component, and we have a button that invokes the method. Then we're going to take the forecast results, okay, which is actually a forecast with a date and description and we can drag this over after the button and let's drop this one as a list again we can choose a list with multiple items 
and we're going to show the date and let's do the description okay So MAF now understands again the structure of the web service and creates the component appropriately in our user interface. And that's one nice thing here is the simplicity of accessing a remote service and incorporating into your mobile application. All right, here's our list okay, created for us. And we're now ready to save this page. And we just need to make sure that we can navigate to this page and Let's go back to our list page over here. I'll just add one more button that will do the navigation for us. So we already have in this page, oh, we actually don't have in this page any navigation to add an employee or a web service. So let's add those two, okay? So go to your tags. Okay, let's look up the link tag. And we'll so you actually want the link component in the map, okay? Don't get confused with the link in the HTML. And just drag and drop it into your page just after the last input text, okay? And we'll have a text that says add employee. Okay, let's see if our actions is available. Now we know there's an add action, okay? Like that. Okay. And we want another, okay, click save. And we want another link, again, for the end of the form. This one would say weather check. And we're going to use WS navigation in this case. Click finish. Okay. We are now ready to finally run our application. Again, um, you could, of course, save everything. Uh, you could at any stage in your application run it and test it. Okay, we just waited till the end to go through the full development process. Um, but at any stage, feel free to start your application in, and run it to check how it works. Right. In order to run your application, you need a run configuration. There might already be one for you defined here, but let's just go into run configurations and show you how to create one. Okay. Uh, I'll just remove the one I already have, so right click and choose delete. And under MAF application, new, and here is where you define the run configuration. You can choose your target, whether it's an iOS device or an Android device. I'm using a Mac, so I can actually run an iOS simulator. If you're using a PC, you probably want the Android option here. Okay. And when you choose the Android, you should be able to see your Android emulator here. Okay. If you don't see a refresh. And um, again, this is how you, it would look for you. I'm going to use an iOS. Okay, and I'm going to run to the simulator. One interesting aspect here, you have uh, advanced options for when you're running, things like defining the uh, images that will be used for your application, icons, splash screens, and other aspects of your application all can be defined here. So we're just going with the default, so don't change anything here. Then click Apply, and let's actually run our application. So what Eclipse is doing right now, is compiling everything, saving everything, and then launching an end script that actually builds your project, package it, okay, as an IPA file, and then deploys it to the simulator. When you're choosing a deployment, you can also deploy directly to a device, not just to a simulator, and test it on the device. And you can also just deploy it to a packaged application that you can then copy to your device and install it. This compilation usually takes about a minute or so, so give it a little time. Right, once your deployment is successful, your emulator would be launched. You might need to just switch to it. And then you can scroll and see your demo VTS application here. 
Now over here you'll see the details of an employee and if you expand this collapsible area on the left side you'll see all the employees and if you click another employee you will see the details updating here. Okay. You can then go and rotate your device. So let's rotate it to the left and then the panel splitter automatically keeps the left side available for me because we're in a different resolution. Okay, um, you can then go and if you want to you can actually go and update uh, the date for one of those um, employees for example. If you click the chart you'll see a chart of all the employees and their salary. Click back. And um, if you click the pick you'll be prompted to select a picture from your collection Okay, and it will be brought into your page. Again click back um, if you scroll down, you have the Add Employee action, which takes you to the Add Employee page. Let's add a new employee. We we'll call him Terry. Okay, and for salary, just put a value and click Done, and click the Add Employee. Okay, and then in your list, you should now see Terry over here. Okay, if you click on Terry, you'll see the rest of the details. Okay, some of them were automatically filled for you. And then you can click the weather check. This goes over to our weather web service, so we need to provide the zip code. If you don't have any other ones, just use 94061 or use your own local one. And again, click the Get City Forecast, and you can see the forecast for your location. Uh, over here, it seems that everything is pretty much the same for the next week. Um, and of course, if you click the help, you'll see your help system. It's basically your first Oracle Math application. As you've seen, development has been quite easy. A lot of drag and drop, a lot of defining properties and setting variables, but not a lot of coding. And that's one of the points of building applications with Oracle Math. Um,